This episode of Internet Today is brought to you by Magic Spoon. Stop right there, you deviants. Put it down. Back away slowly. Because apparently you can pleasure yourself right into an early grave. According to a recent study in the ironically titled Journal of Stroke and uh, Cerebral Vascular Diseases, uh, it is indeed possible for you to jerk off so much that your body will trade one stroke for another, leading to potential death by masturbation. A case report within the Journal of Stroke and Cerebral Vascular Diseases titled Development of Internal Carotid Artery Dissection During Masturbation reads as follows. Sexual intercourse is known as one of the daily activities triggering spontaneous cervicocephalic artery dissection, SCAD. However, it has been unclear if masturbation can trigger the development of SCAD. Herein, we report a case of SCAD in association with masturbation. A 51-year-old right-handed man developed subarachnoid hemorrhage during masturbation. The dissection of the left internal carotid artery was evident on the ninth hospital day. Finally, he was treated with stenting and coiling and discharged with a good prognosis. Discharged. Right-handed, right by the way. So the, it's inconclusive whether or not southpaws can jerk themselves off into an early grave. I would imagine so. We just don't have the data yet, <laughs> Elliot. I'm sorry. So uh, the big thing right up front there is that apparently sex also causes it too. Mm -hmm. But we'd imagine that it's a lot more realistic that uh, people could potentially masturbate far more frequently than engage in intercourse at a rate substantial enough to bring you to the brink of death. Although, dying during regular old intercourse isn't unheard of. Uh, just taking a brief look into the subject led us to a, a handy list of notable people who have died doing the deed. Quote, Nelson Rockefeller, former vice president of the United States and heir to the Rockefeller family fortune, died in 1979 of a heart attack at age 70, rumored to be caused by an orgasm during intercourse with his secretary, Meghan Marshak. King. Died doing what he loved. Mm -hmm. uh, Felix Faure, president of France from 1895 to 1899, died while receiving fellatio from his mistress, Marguerite Steinheil. The cause of death was listed as a cerebral hemorrhage. The French... They got it they, too. They do what they do over there. Yeah. And Sir Billy Sneddon, Australian politician and former leader of the Liberal Party, expired at the peak of physical Congress, as a policeman memorably told the local paper, in 1987. Nineteen years later, his son and lover of the same woman with whom Sneddon was having sex at the time of his death was quoted as saying, I'm sure the old man went out happy. Anyone would be proud to die on the job. <laughs> His son was having sex with the mistress that he died having sex with. That's also, some dangerous pussy right there. That's the pussy that killed your dad. Are you willing I've, to take the risk? I've got yes. to have it. Apparently, the answer to that is yes. Uh, and also, they do point out uh, in like the there's a Wikipedia page about people dying during sex, and they point out that like as you've heard through us going through this, um, primarily the cases include uh, <laughs> adultery. Yeah, they die when they're fucking mistresses. Yeah. So there you go. So uh, that's why monogamy is important, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it you will save your you life. You will literally die mm -hmm. if you cheat. Anyway, there's a bunch of other cases of people falling off balconies while fucking, getting electrocuted by nipple clamps, banging in a still running car inside of a garage, which, yeah, that's going to lead to carbon monoxide poisoning and death. Yeah, but those don't have any relation to like the yeah. uh, your blood flow, those your are heart just, attacks, your brain strokes. Those are just related hijinks. Yes. Uh, but back to your body telling you that enough is enough by essentially causing a life-threatening stroke as a result to over-cranking it. Uh, from reporting about the medical journal entry in the New York Post, the unnamed 51-year-old right-handed man from Japan admittedly enjoyed pleasuring himself several times a day. However, one explosive self-love session went awry when, after climaxing, the serial stroker was struck down by thunderclap headaches and severe vomiting. The man then rushed himself to Nagoya City University Hospital, where he was found to have low blood pressure and confusion two telltale signs of a cerebral vascular accident, according to the medical case study. Emergency medical technicians suspected he had a stroke while stroking, and a subsequent CT scan confirmed that the man had indeed suffered a subarachnoid hemorrhage, SAH, a potentially fatal type of stroke sparked by ruptured blood vessels in the space surrounding the brain. And it's wild. I'm, I'm surprised that he admitted that that's what he was doing. Yeah. Like, you how could, did that could information? Anything else? How did that information get to the doctor's attention? Well, I feel like most people will be like, nothing. Yeah, well, in, I'm just going about my day. In the case of something that could scare you enough, where you're like, I could die. 
it is, you know, best to be completely honest with the doctors. And maybe that was the kind of scared straight incident that this guy was dealing with, where it's just like... Or he gets off on uh, people knowing that he's been jerking it. Maybe that's his biggest kink. <laughs> Sir, if that's a kink, don't let us know, because we can't have you die here on our yeah. floor. <laughs> Whatever you do, no orgasms for a whole month. Yeah. It's like Luckily, that, it was No Nut November. It's like that movie, uh, the, the one with the guy from the 90s, about how he can't have sex for a month. You know the one. You're losing me. With, I, the, I, with the guy, the honky guy. And it's Lent. And he can't, I don't know. It was, uh, can't remember the title or anyone who was in it. Well, that's the thing, though, is with this but guy. But it was a movie. If, with this guy, if it's like, look, take a month off or something. When he comes back, if he had a stroke before, it's going to be, like, even worse this time. Oh! Yeah. yeah, yeah his head's going to explode. It's like, like, we, we, like yeah, you, you, uh, we were talking about it, like, a couple episodes ago where it's like the, uh, that... Vancouver uh, yeah, group was giving out pure drugs. And it's taking like, pure drugs after you've been uh, hitting, hitting the bad stuff. Yeah, you, it's going to be a lot. It's going to yeah. be more than you you think it's going to be. Well, apparently this guy was extremely lucky because he was discharged with no further issues. Uh, and he's lucky because nearly half of people who suffer a ruptured brain aneurysm die. And two thirds of survivors are left with, quote, serious neurological deficits. And he didn't get, he apparently cleaned bill of health after leaving the uh, yeah, that's hospital for this. So I guess it, it was a happy ending after all. Yeah, good for him. Because, yeah, that, that kind of shit's terrifying. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff you really, in most cases, have no control over. This guy did directly uh, influence the fact that his, uh, his blood vessels gave out. But in a lot of cases, it just sort of happens. I <laughs> and know. you're either close enough to a hospital or not. I want to know how many times were it ha- did it happen on the day that he had his stroke? Like, was he pushing, like, a new record? <laughs> yeah. Was he blowing dust? I don't know. I don't or know or was it a situation where it was like, hey, I'm on this website, Reddit, and they're doing this challenge where you don't come for an entire month. Yeah. I think I might give it a shot. This could be a no-nut November-related injury. It could be. We don't know. If you're jacking off several times a day, it's and um, then you stop. It's a bad idea to just go cold turkey. Yeah, you need to taper off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you'll have a stroke from doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on now to the biggest story in the world right now: the godforsaken Summer Olympics, which are currently being held in Tokyo and I guess on NBC. Hard to find. Peacock. Hard, hard to track any of this shit down. NBC Sports. Peacock. Uh, some of it's live. Some of it's not. You yeah. want to watch the Olympics? What? Yeah. Oh, and you want to see clips of interesting moments? Well, too bad. I don't They're know. not coming from official channels. Then. Figure it we're, out. We're going to DMCA you. Yeah, we're going to DMCA anyone even attempting to show what happened to the Olympics, but we're going to do a fucking dog shit dog of actually just showing you the thing that you are looking for. There's already Twitch streamers who have uh, been like, uh, I don't know how long the bans are for Olympics footage, but have been banned for watching clips of the Olympics. So uh, the, 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 Olympic, the International Olympic Committee should, for the next one, just give... Give the entire contract to just Twitch. Yeah, that'd just, be great. Just beam the shit to Twitch with like, no commentary. Tony Hawk posted clips from the Olympic skateboarding competition. I'm like, Tony, buddy, watch out. The NBC's going to come for your ass. <laughs> anyway, if you need a refresher on everything that's gone on over the past few weeks with the Olympics, go watch our most recent episode of Weekly Weird News where we do a kind of quick recap on, uh, as well as just ta- talking about how it seems like the entire event is being sabotaged by everyone involved, self-sabotaged yeah. or unintentionally sabotaged. The They're, locals are getting in on it. Everybody's uh, having fun. Yeah, the cancel culture is uh, really <laughs> ramping up over in Japan right now. Some of these people, it's like, eh, whatever. Some of them, it's like, wow, you are a piece of shit. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no one involved in these Olympics are coming away unscathed. <laughs> uh, it has ruined the community, yeah. the country, and everyone's careers in the process. Um, but yeah, if everything else wasn't bad enough, guess what? Now God is upset. Because she has sent a tropical storm to Japan in an attempt to cancel the Olympics. Biblically. Yeah. Just kidding, of course. God isn't real, but... The not, tro- not our God. The, the Shinto God who created the Japanese archipelago by dipping his sword in the Atlantic <laughs> Ocean yeah. and building the islands with the brine. That, that entity is, is, real, upset. is real and very upset. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the tropical storm, regardless of your opinion of whether God exists, the tropical uh, storm is real. Uh, it's named Nepar Tak, and it's uh, currently scheduled to make landfall on Tuesday of this week, bringing wind and rain and even more drama to the already cursed event. And from Gizmodo's reporting on the storm, quote, 
Japan's Meteorological Agency on Sunday forecasted that Tropical Storm Nepartak could make landfall on Tuesday in the Kanto area located on the country's main Honshu Island, which includes Tokyo, according to the Japan Times. However, there was also a chance that Nepartak could instead head north to the Tohaku region, also on Honshu. The outlet reported that a warning for heavy rain, strong winds, and high waves has been issued. If Nepartak makes landfall on Tuesday, it could cause gusts of up to 78 miles per hour, or 126 kilometers per hour, and deposit up to 5.9 inches, 15 centimeters of rain, hmm. in the Kantu Koshin region. Hmm. <laughs> uh, adding that, at the very least, pretty much all of the sports that are being held outside are at risk of rescheduling. How many times we got to teach you this lesson, Japan? Yeah. Anyway, over on the less serious side of Olympics news, uh, what better time to debut the latest in robotic advancements than on the world's biggest stage? Mm -hmm. Meet Q, the six foot ten basketball playing robot, which is of course uh, terrifying, but also really good at sinking free throws. Swish. Yeah. Now, first off, why the fuck did they have to make this thing as scary as it is? Yes, they could have made it adorable or something. Instead, it looks like yeah. an actual action movie villain. Yeah. But uh, anyway, Q was developed by Toyota, uh, volunteers there uh, at Toyota, and has already set the Guinness World Record for, get ready for it, most consecutive basketball free throws thrown by a humanoid robot by hitting 2,020 free throws, a number which honors the year of these summer games, or at least the year they were supposed to happen in. Uh, that is a made-up world record. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's cool. I, these Guinness World Records are getting way too specific at this point. <laughs> well, it's like to, uh, Toyota's like, hey, Guinness, we got this robot that can shoot three free throws. Um, is there a record? And Guinness, they're like, well, if there isn't, you can certainly buy one. I mean, we are for sale. Yeah. The Guinness World so, Records, it's like, it's basically like bogus Amazon reviews at this point. <laughs> yeah. Great products. Also, First time this has ever happened. 2,020 free throws. Uh, obviously, we can't show the footage, but this thing is slow. Yeah, how it long did that big. take? That must have taken weeks. It started last year, probably. I would hate to be this, the Guinness guy working on that. Just like, oh well, I God. did doze off for a couple yeah. hours. Let's, so let's, let's round up the nearest <laughs> thousand. How many did you say it could do? 2020? Yeah. Sure. 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 Uh, yeah. This robot, uh, it would absolutely suck at pretty much everything in, everything else that's involved in the sport of basketball mm -hmm. that isn't standing completely still for a very significant amount of time and then finally throwing a ball into a hoop. Q is very slow. It is a very slow, very methodical basketball playing robot that any player could just walk up and steal from before Q would even know what happened to him. I want to see this robot. I want them to teach you how to play billiards. Yeah. Probably do a great job at that. He's a real shark. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, like we said, it's the Olympics. So we can't even risk showing you the video of Q nailing these shots. Uh, the, the pictures, they tell the, the story. I wouldn't want to be anywhere near this robot, regardless of how good it is at basketball, especially at six foot, ten inches tall. Yes. Did they have to make it that tall? I mean, that's the average height of your typical NBA uh, center. So... Uh... But does it need to be that tall to make free throws? No, probably yeah. not. Uh, anyways, we do have links to videos where you can watch it very slowly make free throws in the description below. Uh, but Q wasn't the only robot showing itself off at this year's Olympics because over the weekend, an adorable tiny little bus robot was uh, working for the Olympics, bringing a little ball out to the field for the rugby match between Fiji and Japan. Now, this one's cute. I like yeah. this one. Adorable. It's just like that robot that delivers uh, packages in America but avoids homeless people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And while we're on the topic of sports, we should probably take the wind out of everyone's sails by confirming that a video that went viral, which appears to show Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback Tom Brady playing catch with a throwing machine, is not actually real. Mm -hmm. I mean, it looks impressive. And if there's any quarterback who could make throws this accurate over and over and over again, it's probably Tom Brady. Yeah. But multiple sources have come out to deny the validity of the clip. Uh, first off, sports outlets were quick to point out that it was highly unlikely because of the, the, the jugs machine here. It, it only works one way. So it wouldn't be able to actually receive the thrown ball. Then uh, Captain Disillusion, a uh, great YouTuber, yeah. chimed in after being inundated with requests about the video, pointing out irregularities with the clip that confirmed that it's been altered. And finally, the VFX artist responsible for the clip, Ari Fararui, confirmed that they had directed and handled the visual effects on the clip after Brady tagged them in a post. It's cool looking. And like, yeah, 
that's the thing with like the it was like Yahoo Sports was like, well, the jugs machine. Cool. Uh, it isn't designed that way. And it's like, okay, if you're doing, you know, a practical video mm-hmm. where Brady's like, yeah, I could probably do this. You could definitely find a person who's good with mechanical devices to alter it to do that. And it's a cool looking video, but it's uh, sadly it's fake. Mm. He's still got the rings, though. So it doesn't matter. He's got a lot of rings. Uh, we do have a bunch more news for you in addition to some absolutely absurd photos and video clips. But uh, first, if you want to compete at your top physical peak, but you don't want to give up on cereal, then boy, do we have the brand for you because this episode, luckily, is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Now, growing up, cereal, it was, of course, one of the best parts of being a kid. But you got to give it up, guys. It's, uh, it's full of sugar. It's full of junk that you really shouldn't be eating. Luckily, in steps Magic Spoon. They've got zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. And it's also only 140 calories. Try Magic Spoon's best-selling flavors in a four-flavor variety pack, including cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. Uh, obviously, we've uh, said multiple times we have a lot of favorites here. Uh, I this like peanut good. butter. Yeah, I think peanut butter is probably my favorite, but they're all very good. Yeah, blueberry and fruity are great if you want. If you're into fruity cereal, I like those. Uh, it's fun a to lot. change it up. Yeah, and mix and match. You get the variety pack. You can mm, do whatever the hell you want. Be careful with that, because I, I I hit the the end of a bag where it was like not enough for one serving. You mix them. I can't remember which ones I mixed. It wasn't terrible, but it was it was a bit of a blueberry clash. and peanut butter. There was some mm, clashing. Mm. Um, anyway, it tastes exactly like regular cereal from your childhood, uh, and it's super nutritious. It's honestly way too good to be true. And by the way, it's keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, low carb, and GMO free. Click the link below to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use the promo code TODAYDAILY at checkout to get $5 off any order. Or just go to magicspoon.com slash todaydaily. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's back with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Click the link below and use the code TODAYDAILY, one word, for $5 off. Or go to magicspoon.com slash todaydaily to save $5 today. There you go. All right, uh, back into the news now with uh, a video that we saw a couple weeks back, and I was going to bring it up in an episode of News Dump, but uh, sometimes things fall by the wayside. Anyways, I I remembered the video. Uh, I saw it uh, in a chat that I had sent to some friends, and I was like, this is so ridiculous, I I have to show it off, even though it's a little bit old now. Um, Obviously, there are no shortage of cryptocurrency tokens constantly being released, and while we've all been slowly boiled alive by all of the jargon and lingo and marketing for cryptocurrency, tokens, exchanges, features, claims, and so on and so forth, um, this video still somehow scrambled my brain. It is for a token that was released uh, a, a little while back. Based about on, a month ago. Yeah, based on a line from an episode of The Office where Stanley jokes about a currency to make fun of Dwight's shroot bucks. Well... The Stanley Nickel is its own cryptocurrency now, apparently. But what's wild is that whoever developed the token paid to get Leslie David Baker, who played Stanley in the office, to actually explain and promote the coin. Yeah, yeah. it feels like they just... Sent him a script and were like, hey, here's... Or or literally just looked him up on Cameo. And got him to like. It doesn't seem like he even knows what he's reading. Yeah, no. It, and I did. He does have a cameo, and I did check in. It's like no promos, but if you want that, you can email me here, and it has yeah. an email link for it. So it it does seem as though they had a budget, and they were like, "Look, we're all here to make money, right, yeah. Mr. Stanley?" Um, but yeah, here's a few important notes. Um, this is not us promoting this token. No, at all. You will almost certainly lose your money. Uh, yeah, I, I. What I want you to do here is I want you to imagine that you are all the way back in 2007, a time before cryptocurrency even existed, the time when this episode actually aired. So pretend you're in 2007. (laughs) Cryptocurrency doesn't exist. You don't know any of these terms or what they mean. And you see this fucking video. Imagine you see this and and someone is like, oh, hey, look, uh, this video was sent back from the year 2021. Let's check it out and see what the future's like here. The Stanley Nickel Token, better known as the Nickel Token, has officially launched on Uniswap and PocketSwap. Nickel is an ERC-20 token on the Ethereum blockchain, including deflationary and frictionless yield mechanics. This means you earn more tokens just by holding, and the supply is constantly decreasing, raising the value of the remaining tokens. 
Nickel is a utility token with a charitable basis, rewarding holders with future NFTs, memorabilia, collectibles, and additional partner tokens while giving back and helping make a difference in the world. Weird. So yeah, uh, by the way, in case you didn't see this coming a mile away, the value of the Stanley Nickel token has decreased by 93% <laughs> since mid-June. Yeah. But uh, has still successfully maintained its ratio of unicorns to leprechauns. So that's good. But uh, let's get back into the actual news from this week. It looks like there's some fake news to talk about in the real news. Uh -huh. We previously reported on the insane floods that have been ravaging different parts of the world, most notably uh, China and Germany. Well, uh, a local German reporter is having to do some apologizing after she was Caught, caught in 4K, just <laughs> smearing mud all over herself before appearing on camera to report from the site of the flood. And she claims it's because she felt bad looking so clean while on site in a disaster area. And that's probably the truth. Yeah, it's just uh, like, I look pristine and perfect yeah, this, and done up in makeup, and there's literally like, people, like, wading through mud. This and... is a bad look. A better look would be if I was dirty, but an even worse look would be if I was caught making myself get dirty. <laughs> so as long as I... Let's roll the dice. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, from BBC, Susanna Olin, 39, said she acted after feeling ashamed of reporting from the town in her clean clothes. The broadcaster RTL says she has been suspended for breaching its standards after the video went viral. In a statement, Ms. Olin said she had made a serious mistake. Ms. Olin said she had been helping aid efforts in the days before filming for RTL's Good Morning Germany program on Monday, but before going on air, she felt ashamed to stand in front of the camera in clean clothes. Without thinking, she said, I smeared mud on my clothes. At that point, a video of her bending down to spread dirt on her hands and clothes was apparently filmed by an onlooker and later posted to social media. Apologizing for her actions, Ms. Olin said, this should have never happened to me, in her statement. Um, RTL said Miss Olin had been put on leave after the video came to its attention. The broadcaster did not say whether further action would be taken. I mean, good for her for if she was actually helping out, cleaning up some stuff before going on air, and then she actually just felt bad and smeared mud to be like, look, I, I was helping. It doesn't look like I was, but I'm in here in the thick of it, and uh, I don't helping. think anyone would have cared that she looked too clean. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Germans would have. But. Yeah, I do like how she's like, this should have never happened to me. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, needless to say, I can't think of any news story like this without reminiscing about my favorite viral weather reporting clip from here in the States, where the reporter is floating in floodwaters in a canoe. And wouldn't you know it, some people just happen to simply walk by yeah. in the background. It looks like this water is like neck deep. And, uh, and people just go waiting by. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Uh, in other embarrassing news, though, a Florida man has washed ashore after attempting to walk on water all the way from Florida to New York. <laughs> <laughs> we, we covered, I don't know if it's the same guy. I think it is. But uh, someone attempted this like five years ago. In the ball? Yeah. It oh, was just yeah. sort of a ball. It's sort of a ball. Yeah, like yeah. the hamster ball. It's, yeah. It, I, 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 I read it the, in the script. The original guy wanted to go to like Bermuda, I think, or like. Puerto Rico. I, I I wrote it in the script in a second, but it looks like the it looks like it's a detached part of like a Louisiana riverboat, mm. but it floats. So it has like the paddles across it, and it's yeah. like a it looks like a, 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 a like a Pepsi can on its side. Yeah, but it's crawl entirely around. human powered. Yes, but yeah. So this guy who's who's gonna walk from Florida to New York. Mm -hmm. Turns out he didn't even make it out of Florida, and apparently went in the complete wrong direction. How? <laughs> Before turning up on the beach inside his weird device that looks like the giant paddle of a riverboat that he powers by walking around in. Uh, so, the, yeah, the, the reason he uh, went the wrong direction, the current. Oh. Yeah. It wasn't just... Either that or confusion. But I would yeah. imagine the current would be much harder to fight than people would assume. I mean, if you're used to being on one side of Florida, maybe he was on, spent a lot of time on the Gulf Coast. And he's like, all right, north is to the right. And, Let's go. And what are waves? <laughs> waves exist? Yeah. Okay. This water is very choppy compared to what I'm used to. Yeah, and also very cold. <laughs> very cold over here. Uh, here's a guardian. A Florida man startled beachgoers. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> Florida man startled beachgoers when he washed ashore inside a hybrid bubble running wheel device. The man, identified by a local news channel as Reza Balucci, washed ashore in Flagler County on the east coast of Florida on Saturday. He was inside of a large barrel-type device which appeared to have flotation buoys attached to each end. The Flagler County Sheriff's Office posted photos of the strange vessel on Facebook. Quote, the occupant advised he left the St. Augustine area yesterday to head to New York, the Sheriff's Office said. 
but came across some complications that brought him back to shore. The U.S. Coast Guard was contacted and arrived on scene to take over the case and ensure the vessel slash occupant are USCG compliant for their safety moving forward. And we just dragged him back out to sea. There you go. Just slap a boating sticker on it. Did you register with the sea? All right. That looks seaworthy to me. <laughs> hey, it floats, right? Uh, Fox 35 Orlando reported that Bellucci's aim was to run to the northern U.S. or Bermuda. Those are two very different uh, yeah. options there. Uh, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Uh, Bellucci instead ended up 30 miles south of his St. Augustine <laughs> starting point. Quote, my goal is to not only raise money for homeless people, raise money for the Coast Guard, raise money for the de police department, raise money for the, de for the fire department, That's, he told uh, the local TV channel. Uh, they are in public service. They do it for safety and they help other people. Yeah. What? It seems like he is uh, just... How are you raising money by doing this? Wait, who's going to arrest me and who's going to not let me do this? The Coast Guard and the police and the fire department? No, you don't understand. I'm, I'm doing, doing this for you. you. <laughs> and also the homeless. <laughs> we wouldn't have a homeless problem if I could just get Jeff Bezos yeah. to take my design and provide it to the homeless people in Florida who can then... Go to Bermuda. Yeah, go to Bermuda. Turn it into a homeless colony. Yeah. Uh, look, we are all for eccentric attempts at raising money for charity, but this one seems both exceptionally dangerous and very hard. I don't know if he's going to succeed. Yeah. And that's... Uh, it's also because this guy started his journey during hurricane season. And as we know, hurricanes, they go all the way up the coast. Yeah. There is no area uh, on the walk from Florida to New York that would be safe from a hurricane, uh, an inevitable hurricane that is almost certainly going to happen at some point. Yeah. But uh, in other lengthy journeys for charity news, it looks like Bear Son, the costumed bear who is walking from Los Angeles to New York City, has already met their fundraising goal for mental health awareness and has gone ahead and increased that goal to 15,000. Now, Bear Son appears to be in Arizona currently. <sighs> yeah. Uh, he's been walking on Route 66, took a little one-day detour to the Grand Canyon and walked out over that uh, glass bottom bridge that sticks out over it. More power to Bear Sun. Look, I love Bear Sun. This is going to take forever, as we said. <laughs> I'm actually impressed by how far he's made it so far. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Because that's a long distance with not a lot in the, the middle. And very hot and yeah. also multiple times a day being stopped by fans from TikTok and Instagram yeah. who want pictures and take videos and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's a treacherous journey without constantly being stopped by onlookers. But uh, look, he's already made it to Arizona. That's good progress. Yeah. So there you go. Anyway, before we go today, we had to show you this. A, a few episodes back, we talked about the uh, weird artwork that was created where uh, Jesus Christ is always with you and whatever you're doing, good or bad, you're doing it with Jesus. Yeah. Uh, the most famous examples being uh, Jesus driving a truck or Jesus uh, doing heroin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it turns out someone who watches our show has an indirect relationship with the original artist of the Jesus doing heroin piece and sent us some behind the scenes info and images. Yeah. Um, apparently, a local artist needed some volunteers to literally stand there yeah. dressed as Jesus and a person doing heroin. So now we have uh, some exclusive behind the scenes uh, photos of that uh, the previously I was unaware of on the yeah. internet. So you're seeing it first. And us came, came in from protocol from our Discord server who said, I was talking to my brother and dad about funny tattoos and I pulled up that image of Jesus taking the heroin for that guy. And my dad was like, I went to high school with that guy in the painting, then went to his Facebook and grabbed these images. And, and sure enough, there he is posing with Jesus and acting like he's doing heroin for the artist alongside a photo of the artist in the process of creating this beautiful piece. It's a lovely piece of art. Yeah. I went to his website after we filmed that video. Uh, he, he sells prints of it. They're a little expensive. I mean, in it, my opinion, it's is it not worth it to have this beautiful piece of art hanging as a conversation uh, piece? Yeah. And I, right. Can, can you put a price on salvation? <laughs> I don't you think can't. so. Anyway, um, I didn't pull the trigger on it, but I, I strongly considered it because I was like, "This would be." I would, I would happily hang this in my home. It is a, <laughs> it is one of my favorite pieces of art. We need uh, someone, someone out there that does photorealistic artwork <laughs> to now do a photo of Jesus controlling the mouse of Elliot online shopping. <laughs> 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 uh, get the piece. 
It's a real conversation starter. You'll enjoy it for years to come in your in your walkway, your entryway of your home. Anyways, it is it's a very strange small world out there that we we now have behind the scenes photos of the man posing for this this piece of art that I it has to be old because I remember this it's on the from internet like 15 years ago, yeah, I think. This is legendary on the internet. Yeah. Anyways, maybe the artist will send us one uh, I hope so. If you're watching. I'm it. genuinely a fan of it. It is a, <laughs> it's a fantastic painting. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Uh, anyways, that's it for today's episode. Please be sure to watch our most recent episode of Weekly Weird News about the uh, Olympics being canceled. Uh, and also the most recent episode of News Dump, where we had a special appearance from uh, someone you know and love, Phil, who chimed in with some wonderful news at various points of the episode. Check both of those out. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit that like button. And we'll see you soon for some tech news.